So, I went to a WWE show last week. I'm a wrestling fan. I am. I like wrestling. I enjoy wrestling. I do. But man, watching it on TV is hard. And I tried watching Raw, and I tried watching SmackDown, and it's not easy. None of it makes sense. So you got the Survivor Series. The Survivor Series has traditionally been a bunch of throwaway Survivor Series matches and then a main event that's awesome. The Survivor Series match itself is interesting. It's entertaining. It's five on five, single elimination. And me and my friends, we used to sit and we would basically take bets amongst ourselves on who was going to get eliminated in what order. We usually knew who was going to win the match, which team would win the match. Sometimes the good guys would run through all five of the bad guys, or all five of the bad guys would run through all the good guys. And it was it was fun to watch. And then you have that main event at the end of the night that was just awesome. And uh, WWE is really, this is just awful. First off, having champion versus champion isn't a bad idea for, oh, Night of Champions. But having, like, and I didn't see the end of Raw, but I, I saw the footage on SmackDown when they played it of all of the SmackDown wrestlers attacking all of the Raw wrestlers. That's stupid. Every single SmackDown wrestler turned turned heel for a night. All of them. Why? Oh, we got to beat up Raw. Why? Why is every wrestler in on this? Why in the world would all of these face wrestlers want to go in and attack people just because they're on the other brand? That's stupid. They're they're trying to bring back the the feeling they had with Nexus. They're trying to bring back that invasion idea. You know what? It's not going to work at all. It doesn't make me want to watch the event. Now, let's start with the the traditional matches. So you have Team Raw versus Team SmackDown. The only one that's known is that Randy Orton is going to be the captain. Who cares? Let's be let's be really honest here. None of it matters. Really, in real, in 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 reality, none of it matters. So, see, if if your traditional match starts off, and I already say, ah, who cares? That's not good. And then you've got Team Raw, which is Alicia Fox and four others to be determined. Like we're not going to know who they are against Team SmackDown, which is Becky Lynch, Charlotte, Naomi, Carmella, Tamina, with Lana and James Ellsworth. Uh. I don't care. I, I don't... I don't understand what's on the line here. I don't understand what makes me say, yeah, I need to see this. Don't get it. Then you look further up the card, and you've got Intercontinental Champion Miz versus Baron Corbin. Well, the fans hate both. That's not good. Alexa Bliss is against Natalia, the two women's champions. Fans hate both. They're both heels. Then you've got Brock Lesnar versus Jinder Mahal. Now, Brock, eh, tweener, you'll fight anybody, and Jinder's a heel. I don't see the big heroic moment here. The big Survivor Series moment. Remember, you've got Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, and Survivor Series. With SummerSlam, yeah, it's kind of a major one, but for me, it was... Survivor Series, Rumble, Mania. Survivor Series set up your Rumble, which sets up Mania. That's how I remember it, but then again, I'm really old. <clears throat> I, I don't look at this this card and say, oh, this is going to be great. I can't wait to see Miz against Baron Corbin. Miz has improved a lot in the ring, and his character is over the top. He's fantastic. Baron Corbin, I, I, I don't, I'm not a fan. And I think part of the reason he's where he is is because he's big. When he was in NXT, uh, Baron Corbin was kind of the, the stepping stone that would get you to the title shot. So he was close. He was upper card, almost main event, not quite main event. And he was the guy you'd step over to get to the NXT champion. And that was fine. But I just, I, I, I don't buy him on the main roster. And I think he's where he is because he's big. You look at the guys who are champions, Jinder Mahal. He's a lot bigger than he was when he was a jobber. He's much more ripped, right? Uh, Brock Lesnar. Well, we know about the PED 
issue with uh, UFC, right? He, he got suspended for a reason. Um, Randy Orton's captain on SmackDown. Why? Well, look at look at the build of him. Um, and Miz, not there for his build, but Corbin's there for his size. And Miz is there because he's a heat magnet. And then, I'm not forgetting the tag match. The tag match might be the, 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 the match to save the show, which is the Usos against Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. The Reunited Shield. I've had people ask me about the Reunited Shield on my other channel. Here's my honest opinion. It doesn't matter. The Shield being reunited does not excite me. Because any time that a faction reunites, it's only reuniting briefly. It's reuniting for a couple of months. It's reuniting to sell extra t-shirts. It's reuniting for the sake of a little bit of nostalgia from the fans. And then it'll disappear. And it's going to disappear because, you know, the, the, the speculation is that Dean Ambrose is going to turn heel. That makes the most sense because WWE refuses, flat out refuses to admit that Roman Reigns doesn't work. Flat out refuse to admit Roman Reigns is not going to get over with the fans. So they're going to keep, keep turning other guys against him and having other guys turn bad to try to make him the good guy. It, it, it just, it's, it's not something that works and the idea that they're building towards Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns for Mania or Ron Strowman it really doesn't matter who cares like Jinder Mahal against Brock Lesnar I, I don't care I don't I don't have any and here's the problem too so Jinder Mahal comes out last week on Smackdown I I'm giving a challenge to Brock Lesnar and the wrestling world is amazed and Brock comes out and accepts but in the meantime the card we find out is just all of the champions from one show fighting the champions for another. So it's not like Jinder actually made a challenge because this is just the card and they're just falling in line with it. It's it's hard to watch. I said it. It's hard to watch. And when you go and see a house show, you're seeing all kinds of guys wrestling. You're not hearing a bunch of commentators. And, and it's just for the night you watch results and and you enjoy yourself as long as you can get in the front door of the building i don't look at this survivor series as a can't miss i look at this survivor series and say wow nxt is schooling these guys for a reason nxt has war games coming war games the real deal ideal that wrestling fans have been begging wwe to use on the main roster and they give it to nxt NXT is the show for wrestling fans who like wrestling. But here's here's the secret. There aren't a lot of people watching Raw and SmackDown who aren't wrestling fans. WWE for years now has been trying to cater to uh, mainstream. They want mainstream media attention. They want to bring in a big name like back when they brought in Mike Tyson or whoever. Whatever the celebrity was for the day, right? They bring in Snoop Dogg to bring... Um, Sasha Banks out because they're they're distantly related a couple years ago they have to give that up and just realize they're a wrestling company realize you're a wrestling company cater to wrestling fans last week's pay-per-view AJ Styles and, and Finn Balor blow the roof off the place have the best match of the year according to many sources and it wasn't supposed to happen it only happened because superstars depending on who you read it from i'm pretty sure it's the mumps this has come out as but it's viral meningitis was the other rumor whatever's happened has fallen uh, upon bray wyatt and because bray wyatt couldn't wrestle as sister abigail because he couldn't be a woman and wrestle we got aj styles versus finn balor and a fantastic match and then they job finn out in a matter of minutes to kane because of course they did this is the booking that drives people nuts. This is what drives everybody insane. And it, it harkens back to WCW. So WCW was always pushing the old guys, and they weren't pushing the new guys. Well, what does having Kane squash Finn Balor do? I love Glenn Jacobs. The guy is a fantastic wrestler, Hall of Famer, absolutely great career. Why Finn Balor? Why take a guy who was given the title right away and then he couldn't defend it because he was injured and and now they bury him in a feud with Bray Wyatt for a while 
and now they have him emerge only to get beaten by Kane. I don't know what they're doing with Finn Balor. This is the frustration I'm feeling when I watch the show. And I watch the women's show, and it's like I watch women's match, and I'm like, okay, so Sasha Bailey and Alicia Fox are in the ring. Uh, Sasha and Bailey, they keep talking about how they're friends, they're friends, they're friends. So Alicia's winning the match. And Alicia wins the match. Predictability is another thing that dragged down WCW. WCW got dragged down by very many things, and WWE through their own... I, I can't say that they're lazy per se, because they do elevate new stars, which WCW didn't do, but they elevate new stars and feuds that are very predictable and very paint-by-numbers. And women, the only reason women fight each other is because they're jealous. They're catty. Or they just stop fighting each other. Apparently Nia Jax just walked out. Nia Jax has walked out because Sasha Banks beat her clean. She talked to The Rock, and The Rock said, yeah, go ahead, walk out if you don't want to do it anymore. <clears throat> Nia has a point, and yet she doesn't. A, you can't bring a woman in who's a monster and have her lose all the time. It doesn't make any sense. Just like you wouldn't bring a guy in who's a monster and have him lose all the time. But because it's the women's division, nobody seems to really care. This is obvious in the way it's booked. Nia Jax picks fights with Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss and her have this big blowout. And three weeks later, they're all of a sudden back together and not a mention is made of the fact that they had just started a feud with each other. Absolutely ridiculous. How many times has Alicia Fox been good? Bad. Good. Bad. Now they're playing her as crazy. That would be fine if Alicia Fox was really, really good at acting crazy. She's not. Alicia Fox is a good wrestler. She's a beautiful woman. She absolutely deserves a push to the roof. She deserves a title run. But they keep sticking her in, in matches where she turns good, bad, bad, good, bad, good. She goes to the ring and nobody reacts because nobody knows what her character is or whether she's going to be good or not. Is well, Are we cheering for her tonight? Are we booing her? Who is she fighting? It's, it's sad. It's really hard to watch. And going into Survivor Series, I just don't have a reason to be emotionally invested in any of this. So, let me know if I'm way off base. Because to me, it's like they've got so many really good, talented wrestlers, and they don't know what to do with them. And rumor has it that Cody Rhodes, who's been very successful in the independent scene since leaving WWE, now has WWE wrestlers, contracted wrestlers, contacting him and saying, how do we get out of here? How do we get out of our contracts? Neville's walked out. He wants out. He's done. Neville was a great champion on NXT. They bring her up, bring him up to the main roster, and what did they do? He's little. You got to put him in the, with the cruiserweights. He's too little to be a threat to the big guys. This is the mistake that WWE has made that makes them look like old WCW. Oh, you're a cruiserweight. You fight cruiserweights. No, no, you're not realistically a threat to guys like Baron Corbin. BS. Neville puts on five star matches, and sadly, they didn't give him the chance to do that in the main on the main roster. I watched him in NXT. Neville was amazing, and on the main roster, of course, he's frustrated because they're not using him to his full potential. So he walks out. Austin Aries asks for his release because Austin Aries, who's a fantastically talented wrestler, gets pushed to the bottom of the card. And while I like what Jinder Mahal's done, and I did a video on how he's a credible champion, Jinder Mahal's wrestling is way below. That of guys like Shinsuke Nakamura, who he beat clean at the show I watched. He's below a Kevin Owens. He's below AJ Styles. He's below a lot of these guys in terms of actual wrestling talent. There are fans like myself who want to watch really good wrestlers put on really good matches. There's a reason that Ricky Steamboat and Randy Savage stole the main event spotlight from Andre the Giant and Hulk Hogan back at WrestleMania 3. There's a reason that we all love that match. Because it was wrestling. It was great wrestling. Andre and Hogan was a great spectacle. Lousy wrestling. Andre could barely move at that point. Hogan could barely pick him up. Hogan had punch, kick, punch, kick, um, leg drop. So it, the main event was really anticlimactic. It was only nine minutes long. Whereas Savage and, and Steamboat put on a match that to this day is recognized as poetry in the ring. So why does it take a, a, an illness to to Bray Wyatt for the for the WWE to give us the match that we want with AJ Styles and and Finn Balor and the Two Sweet and all of that? Why? It sometimes feels like the company's trolling its fan base, and then they wonder why they're losing money. 
Uh, the network, by all accounts, has been a flop. It's not bringing in what they thought it would. They felt it would grow every year. Here's the problem. Wrestling fans aren't growing in number every year. For WWE to make this work, wrestling fans have to grow in number, and they're not. So, there you go. You excited about Survivor Series now? Yeah, you should be. It's uh, it's going to be a great show. Uh, yeah, WWE, Survivor Series. No, uh, it's... To me, it looks like a lousy, lousy card. And they're already talking about, well, this champion could change before Survivor Series, and that champion could change before Survivor Series, so we'll have good guys against each other. You know what? This is ridiculous. So you're, you're going to post a card, you're going to have the card up there, and then you're going to change the card like a week or two before the event? Like, Just stop. Just stop. And it's all on the network anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And you can tell that they're phoning it in. Now that there's a pay-per-view every two bloody weeks... They just don't care. They don't give you your money's worth, and they want more money from you. If you're Canadian, it's now, I believe, twelve ninety nine. dollars It's eleven ninety nine or twelve ninety nine. I think it's twelve ninety nine now for WWE Network. And, you know, honestly, I, I subscribe. I have it for a few months, and then I unsubscribe. And I haven't subscribed to it now in, in a, over a year. It's been over a year since I was subscribed to the network, because... There were too many times that they'd have a new pay-per-view on and I just didn't care. Or I'd watch the women's match and then I didn't care about the rest of the card. And and they've even got me to the point where I don't care about the women's division either because they don't care about the feuds. Oh good, it's another five-way schmoz match. Oh, that's good. Oh, it's a four-way. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. They're, they're a step away from just going back in time, going back to bra and panty matches, and just forgetting about it. The, the women's revolution, honestly, it, all of the talent in the world is there, and yet the feuds don't make any sense, there's nothing on the line, and everybody gets a shot at the title, and everybody seems to get a run with the title, except Sasha, who loses it the first time she gets to defend it. I, you know, I don't, I don't understand. I don't. Um, and, and the way that titles are kind of hot-shotted around... It, it just cheapens those belts. Cheapens those belts. And then you got the cruiserweights, and who's ruling cruiserweights right now? Enzo, the most hated guy in the locker room. Enzo. Who, I, I love Enzo on the mic, not very talented in the ring. Of course, you're going to take the cruiserweights, and you're going to take a guy who's the right weight, but can't really wrestle like a cruiserweight, and give him the belt. Fantastic idea. That's a great idea. That would be like WCW giving X-Pac the, uh, the Cruiserweight title. Think about it. X-Pac was great on the mic. He was. He was good on the mic. Not great in the ring. Couldn't get the crowd behind him. Now Enzo's good at getting the crowd behind him, but he's not great in the ring. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. And thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.